Hey everybody, Pete A. Turner, executive producer and host of your Break It Down show. Yes, indeed, I am back putting out shows every day. Now that we've got the Prison Chronicles parts 1, 2, 3, and 4 out, I thought we would let those things breathe for a minute, but now we're back at it because we got shows to put out. Today is the podcast version of our episode with Jesse Pringle. Now look, Jesse is a friend of Pete Koch's, so this is a hashtag the Pete's episode. And Jesse is a country star and an actor and a guy who uh, I think just he refuses to take no for an answer. That's probably the best way to describe it. He just continues to get after it and continues to persevere. And it's just incredible. I love getting folks who are emerging establishing established on the show and he's one of those guys he's he's establishing like he gets work he makes money by creating and it's always neat to see these folks because one they advance on and get to the next level and and now we've known them for a while and we get to all be part of that excitement and that growth the other thing is is just it's neat to be able to share the microphone with somebody who's motivated and especially in this time of covid craziness and and conflict within the u.s it's, it's neat to be able to do that now look if you're abroad maybe you don't care about those things but here in the U.S., it's good just to have this this powerful message of can-do attitude. And I love Pete for bringing this guy on because Jesse's cool. I do have a bit of a sad note to, to relate to all of you. On three different times, four episodes in total, we've had on Dr. Andrew Friedman. And it turns out, unfortunately, that he passed away about a week ago. And I thought I would take this moment to remember him. And we'll link his episodes in the show notes. What an incredible brain. What an incredible, insightful professor, a guy who taught us things about our cosmos, about reality, about religion, and we absolutely did not get enough of him. The last time I reached out to him, I asked if he uh, was able to maybe do another update show with us, and he at times said, he just said, I'm sick, and you know, maybe later, but um, there was no later. It was, we just ran out of time with it, and, and um, yeah, I mean, it, it sucks. It sucks. It sucks when people who've been on the show have become friends and they, and they pass on. And what do you do? You, you know, you have to persevere. So I guess that brings us back to Jesse Pringle. Hey, uh, just in general, uh, it helps if you push out the Prison Chronicles. If you see an episode and you like it, push that out via share. That would be a big help. Also, Scott and I are about to turn around. I guess today, technically, I'll leave and Scott leaves tomorrow. And we start, we join up in Atlanta and we start heading back towards California for the second half of the Save the Brave, Ride for the Brave. So if you haven't already donated and you've been meaning to get to it, here's a chance to do it. Other than that, hey, I appreciate you guys. It means a lot to me that you're all out there and take care of one another and take a moment to express your appreciation for one another because you just don't know. You, you really, you just don't know. All right, here comes Jesse Pringle. Lions Rock Productions. <laughs> This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this East. This is Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. What's up, y'all? This is the outlaw Jesse Pringle, and you are watching The Breaking It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Yeah, Jesse Pringle is a dear friend of mine that I had the chance to meet. Uh, you know, we met initially on social media that connected us, and uh, Jesse is from uh, Kansas City, and uh, that's a that's a city that's near and dear to my heart. There's my Kansas City Chiefs uh, jersey behind me, and uh, he's a, Jesse Pringle is one very very talented and ambitious individual who created uh, has created many many. Uh, of his own projects. He's a writer, director, producer, actor, musician, and singer, a modern man of, of many, many uh, talents. He's an artist through and through. He reached out to me several years ago to be involved in a film and television, a, 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 most specifically a television project. He created a series called Kill Em All, and you can find those on, on YouTube. And I really want to discuss that with him. But he was uh, gracious enough to include me in an acting role in his limited series, uh, Kill em All L.A., where, which, which we shot here in, in Los Angeles. What prefaced, preceded that was Kill em All Kansas City. And I'm very grateful for that opportunity to meet him. And uh, I look forward for the next uh, hour to, to visit and learn more about my friend, Jesse Pringle. 
Hey, Pete, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate the introduction, man, and, and, and blessed to be here with you, bro. You know, why don't you uh, take us through, when I discuss you and your abilities and your, your talents with people, I, I sort of start, uh, maybe this is my personal bias, but uh, I know you're a, a, a considerable athlete. And so I think, uh, tell me what that order of operations were as you grew up in Kansas City as a kid. Did you view yourself as an athlete or, or as, a, as an artist? First of all, to even be considered an athlete from the Swede himself <laughs> <laughs> is, is an honor beyond honor. So, hey, bro, like, but... To answer the question, tell you the truth, Pete, um, I was an athlete by default, <laughs> which means I had an older brother that just beat the shit out of me <laughs> every single day. And his friends just tag team beat the shit out of me every single day. And, you know, there's one thing I had to do was know how to run. <laughs> and and eventually about 10 11 years old, man, nah, it was earlier than that, probably about eight or nine years old. You know, I just got sick of getting beat down and just, uh, <laughs> and just, uh, flipped out on them. And so after that, it was just kind of, um, all competition for me, like whatever it is, whether it was sports, athletics, or some extracurricular activity or hobby, you know, while growing up, it was always a competition for me. And that competitive spirit, I think, is is more so the the um, the uh, the description than than athlete. But I'll take athlete all day long. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I find uh, a, sort of a, a, a line, uh, a through line with a lot of successful musicians is that they that they threw that that anchor of discipline emanated from uh, some some sports or some activity or, or sometimes dance uh, dancers are true athletes also and uh, but you've got the discipline to to succeed you know as you as you move through life and I know that uh, playing playing sports in, in my youth uh, provided me with the discipline that has served me well th throughout my life. What do you think, Pete Turner? I'm trying to type all these dang messages into this live window for me, I love it. Well, so, I'll, I'll continue on this line. No, well, let, let me make a, a point here, too, because that description of yourself as an athlete or as an artist, what about you, Pete? I mean, you're a musician, you know? You play on a trombone, is that right? Sure. I mean, yeah, have you played a trombone president. in years and years or, or no? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I was the president of the senior high school band. Yeah. What? <laughs> crazy right oh man yeah and, and i was in you know and i was in stage and theater outside of football and track and field i was on you know what i mean like so yeah the the weirdest most you know odd circumstances actually all lead to one way and that's where we are right now so I will say that, uh, and it's on my mind, I saw Benicio Del Toro, the actor, this morning. I don't talk about it a lot, but I've been his personal trainer for more than a decade. And I can, and it's, it's, a, it's a friend and a relationship I, I value deeply. And recently, it, it uh, just in the, in, the, in the course of conversation, it came up. We were talking about the film, is it Bird, that Clint Eastwood directed, Forrest Whitaker. It's about the jazz musician and we talk about miles davis just talking about that jazz period and uh, i said uh yeah i know just a little bit about music only because i played an instrument for a few years he says what's that so that opened up that conversation i played the trombone for eight Chiefs. years and, uh, jersey band, you know in high school band and a stage band and a marching band and all that stuff man and, i love hearing that yeah he got a kick out of it and he said could you get any like you know, do you play, do you still play it i said no i haven't picked the thing up in a long long time he says could you could you get a could you get a, a sound out of it if I handed you a trombone now? I said, oh, yeah, I could get a sound out of it. Because, so you could, you could start playing it if you had uh, – give, give you a little bit of time to get, get ramped back up. I said, yeah, for sure. And he said, one of these days, you're going to get an opportunity in a film or TV show or something, and you, gotta, you have to create an opportunity where you're going to pick up a trombone and just start playing it, and you will flip everybody's lid. I think, you know, as actors – we, you know, that element of surprise and that ability to do something that, that the audience will just go, whoa, get back in their seat and go, I sure wasn't expecting that. He goes, that's, yeah, that's your whole card. 
one day, uh, you know, there's got to be a way. You got to figure it out. I said, I never even thought of it that way, but uh, <laughs> I'll work on it. <laughs> that's a great, that, that'd be a, that's a great backstory for any character. You know what I mean? Like, and so, uh, yeah, that's cool, man. Thanks for sharing that. I, you know, I. Yeah, tell us about your, your background in the theater. And what was that feeling like doing plays and what was going on there? Like, I started uh, grammar school. So I started, you know, doing stage. We didn't have a choice back then. It was everyone's in the play. Everybody's in the musical. You're doing this. You're, you know what I mean? Until it got to the point where I actually auditioned for my first part, which was uh, fourth grade. And so I ended up um, getting that. But that, that was a great, you know, thing to lead me kind of gradually. As I said, I was, I was still playing football. I was playing football since I was – I was 10 <clears throat> and running as much track as I could. I was running barefoot <clears throat> because you, once again, goes back to the story of being chased and beat down. So a lot of times you didn't have a chance to uh, pick up and put on a pair of shoes. You just had to be out of there. So but, <laughs> what were you running? Were you running 1500 meters or what was your race? You know, I probably at one time could have run the 1500, but, I ended up pole vaulting. I did a trip. I pole vaulted for like six years. I did a triple jump for a couple of years. I did the discus my last senior year after I uh, knew I was going to a, a D2 school to play football. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to put on about 40 pounds. So, <laughs> so I stopped sprinting and doing all that and put on a bunch of weight, just played tight end. And, you know, anyway, regardless, uh, back to the, the, the acting thing. Um, once I started that process in fourth grade, I was always interested in, in doing the stage and, and things like that. I wrote my first stage uh, stage play segment, if you will, sixth grade, because we had a little talent show among the sixth graders. So I wrote my first stage play segment then, and it was just a reenactment of uh, the final scene of Rocky II, where both... Apollo and Rocky knocked themselves out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and then I played the other actor, of course, went and got fake skin from the dollar store and some fake Halloween glo uh, blood and had boxing gloves and all that. So, I mean, it's been going on for a long time. And, and, and just like Pete said, you know, you pick up a horn, it's going to come back to you. You know, I can't tell you how many guitars I've owned over the years, but I still don't know how to play the guitar. <laughs> I just, I get, you know what I mean? Like more than anything else, you know what life happens. And so, you know, uh, as Pete and, and, and you Pete can, can co-sign, you stack up your responsibilities like bricks in a house, man, or bricks on a wall. And so everything becomes a, a list of priorities and, and music just, and playing trombone literally fell second fiddle for Pete after football in his, uh, you know, Hollywood career. So uh, I wouldn't say that's a, a, a bad thing or a good thing. It's just a thing, man. And for you to pick up a trombone and, and start playing it out in a dark scene for backstory <laughs> on a character in a movie or a TV show would absolutely flip people out. And that's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. No, it's 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 interesting to be around uh, artistic people, as you well know. You cannot, um, you can't, you can't get enough of them. And I, I again, I, I've been really blessed to uh, have uh, Benicio in, in my life uh, for that reason. And he's got stories, and I, I like to I'll share them from time to time. But uh, uh, the the task of of being an artist in uh, Kansas City is not uh, a new idea. Kansas City has been uh, uh, a great jazz city, right, for a long, long time, and it's a, it's it's a it's a it's a major city with a, a incredible commitment to to the arts. Uh, I know Can Kansas City has more. Uh, here's here's random, but it's interesting. I believe Kansas City has more uh, fountains, right, right, public fountains, than any city in the United States. There's certainly art. And I believe only second to Paris in, in terms of uh, number of fountains. That's my my recollection. Yeah, so so they have been cultivating 
You know, you know how much the mafia loves fountains. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of the mob, uh, which takes us to, let me jump. I, I don't know if, the, rather than go chronologically, and I'll let you jump around, but my association with you, Jesse, is a, is a, is a wonderful project that I encourage people to seek out on, uh, on YouTube. Won't cost you a thing, but it's called Kill em All. And Kill em All is, uh, uh, when I first met you and you dis- and you disc- uh, discussed with me doing another season and transitioning and taking your, your Kill em All project, which started out uh, being shot in Kansas City, Kill em All, Kansas City, and then moving it to L.A., Kill em All, L.A. Uh, and so uh, in, in, in preparing for that, I went back and watched all of your episodes. So tell folks a little bit about that show. Uh, and you, you wrote it, you starred in it. It's thoroughly entertaining. Tell us a little bit about how long the episodes are and these, your, your mindset. Quite an interesting uh, notion, I think, to be that creative enough to uh, to develop a project like that. Go ahead. Thanks for asking me. Kill them all, Kansas City. Uh, without making it into a, an extremely long story, let's just say was living in L.A. and then moved back to Kansas City, Missouri. And after the, let's just call it real life training of L.A. and Hollywood, um, from uh, some really um, talented uh, uh, individuals that have, that have lived and, and, and worked as in, in the entertainment industry, uh, whether it was film and TV or music or anything else, stunts even, um, learned from really great people who uh, uh, just mentored me, you know what I mean, along the way while I was out there, uh, you know, chasing my own deal. And when I made it back to Kansas City, I had gotten used to the hustle, uh, you know, so much. Uh, and the same happened for me. I had stayed in New York City for a spell uh, many years ago. And when I came back to Kansas City, you know, Kansas City, a uh, great community, uh, really cool uh, architecturally for film and TV because it um, – seems to have a very classic kind of, uh, I'd say mid, what do you say, Pete, mid 20th century look, even um, even early 20th century look in some places, a lot of old great buildings and things like that. So I'm back in Kansas City and, and used to hustling every day, you know, uh, trying to get something going. And, you know, after so many years uh, already in the music industry independently, to learn how to, you know, either produce results yourself or hang it up, you know what I mean? So, or be, you know, lazy. So as I said, I, I thrive on competition in that regard uh, because my biggest competitor is myself. So, you know what I mean? And I came back to Kansas city. <clears throat> I was like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to create my own opportunity. I'm not in LA right now. I'm not doing a bunch of auditions. I'm not, you know, uh, walking into a room. There's 30 other guys that look exactly like me when I walked in, think I was the only one. So, yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm like, Hey man, so <clears throat> let me develop, you know, let me develop my own acting reel, shooting my own show written by me. Uh, and I'm just like, let me see if anybody's willing to, to throw down with me. So uh, fortunately <clears throat> a lot of great, uh, film and crew and production um, side people in Kansas City um, were equally as excited to team up with someone who'd been out to LA and kind of experienced that whole thing. And, uh, and you know, as I said, Kansas City is a smaller community, but, but as Pete said, it's nothing short of creatives. It is a very creative town. And that is because it's, you know, dropped in the middle of the you know, uh, of America, you know what I mean? So it's, it's smack dag, you know, dab in the middle of everything. So it just kind of melts together into a small community. So everybody's kind of, you know, all right, well, let's do something creative. Like, uh, Pete was saying before, it's got a, you know, it's got a history of jazz and all that. Well, the historic 18th and vine is still in Kansas city and, you know, up and open for business, if you will. And that was, um, you know, originally rehabbed by uh, uh, previous um, Kansas City mayor. And now uh, he's in the Senate for uh, Missouri, Emmanuel Cleaver. And so 
And if I got his title wrong, my apologies, <laughs> Mr. Cleaver. But he originally rehabbed the 18th and Vine area that, that did see all this Dizzy Gillespie, you know, uh, Duke Ellington, Nat King Cole, and, you know, Fats Domino. I mean, all these, this is where the, you know, this is where the, the, the crossroads were, if you will, for jazz and blues and, and that type of R&B back then. And so those places are still here. And, and, and I'll get into that because I was excited to, to shoot uh, the first rap video and, and, and definitely uh, one of the first R&B video, music videos uh, at Historic 18th Vine under the gym theater with the lights and all that stuff. You know, it looks like a universal set. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but um, so Kansas City already had that natural attraction. I was back in Kansas City. I'm on the hustle. I'm like, all right, let me create this thing and, and just uh, make this happen because um, I've got to uh, uh, compete with myself. You know what I mean? And so what a greater story, especially with all the folklore <laughs> with Kansas City and, and the uh, black hand, you know, of the of the Kansas City Mafia, black hand straw man, Terrence O'Malley uh, wrote that. But with all of that history, it makes <laughs> you know, it makes great for a Hollywood story, uh, at least my opinion. You know, I've always been, um, you know, more attracted to crime dramas, and, you know, uh, murder mysteries or things like that, uh, thrillers in that regard. And Kansas City already had such an historical um, past and kind of a storybook past in real life. Uh, it made it... <clears throat> an easy inspiration for what then turned out to be Kill 'em All Kansas City. Now, um, past director Sean Wright in Kansas City and I uh, grew up kind of in the same area. And anyway, years apart, we came back together to team up on that. And at first, what I was doing, remember, Pete, I said I was um, – creating an opportunity to improve my acting real. That's how it all started, you know, and and being a songwriter, well, all right, I can write a scene. So I wrote a scene and I, you know, I'd write about 15, 20 different scene scenarios for different characters that I would have to star as that that could broaden my acting real. Right. So, Mm Kill 'em All Kansas City was just one of those scenes, one of those two or three page scripts that we ended up developing. And so, uh, you know, after we shot it, you know, that's how it all began. And, and, and uh, does Kansas City have, a, um, you know, an organized crime history? Absolutely it does. Does it still exist? Absolutely not. But... <laughs> It makes for a great inspiration, you know what I mean, for for a great story. And, uh, you know, being a fan of Goodfellas and Casino, you know, all those kind of um, dark organized crime dramas and things like that. That's just kind of where I went with it. You know, my my family heritage is is uh, all Irish Scottish. So, you know, throwing me into the mix as this, you know, kind of modern day uh, Irish you know, Irish mobster, if you will, or street thug, if you will, and his uh, his brother uh, Clinton McCullough. Well, my character Carson McCullough, his older brother Clinton McCullough, was killed by the KC mob because it was a collection went bad or something. You can watch it, but uh, <laughs> McCullough uh, spelled differently. But McCullough was uh, is rather uh, my mom's maiden name in real life. Uh, you know, Clinton McCullough, my older brother in the show, Clint is my older brother's real name. So, yeah. you know what I mean? My, you know, my mom's name. I mean, everything was relative. Everything was, uh, you know, I used to say, and I still will, art reflects life. And that's the kind of shit I like writing about and singing about and acting about. Art reflects life. You know, make-believe films and all that are cool and everything. And, when you're trying to decide on, on a part of a project because you are a songwriter, because you can act and you can write scenes and everything, how do you gauge? First off, let me back up and say this. We were talking to Alex Ferrari, similar thing where he's in Hollywood working and working and working and working and doing all the Hollywood things. And he's like, it's just I'm not breaking into the industry 
And so he realized, like, I just need to do this myself and created his own independent film industry, right? And then because he had this proven capacity to create things, Hollywood then started coming, but now on his terms. So I, I love that you're out there taking charge. He, and he said this great thing. It's like, you can always write for free. Like you can, like writing is, creating this content and, and forcing the market to deal with you, you can always do that. So any emerging people, just keep writing content and getting better at it. When you're trying to sort out, you know, because you are, you're like, I'm not an athlete, but you're doing pole vault, clearly an athletic event. You know, you're doing all these different things. You're going to take on football, so you throw some. So you're a can-do guy. When do you know when you're like, I don't need to do this? Yes, you can write a song, but should you be doing that? Or should you have your executive producer actor hat on and have somebody else write the song or whatever? Because you can do so many things and you're so adaptable, how do you know when it's too much and you need to change what you're doing? Hey, this is P.A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. Because you can do so many things and you're so adaptable, how do you know when it's too much and you need to change what you're doing? My character says... Stay calm and collected. Stay chill and, 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 and back behind the curtain, if you will. But my lack of patience for oh, timeliness or, or, or production or, or what, basically nobody's going to work harder promoting me than me. And so I would love to have a, a, a team of 20 or 30 people working for me and and, and we're getting shit done. I said, but, but at the end of the day, I'm the one going to sleep and waking up, looking in the mirror, like what's next. So uh, if something needs to get done and no one's doing it, then I have to do it. You know, <clears throat> I wrote my first several scenes for people to audition for and people took, I wouldn't say people, but you know, I'd gotten stabs at me for, for, for not writing in the, in, you know, in, in, in the right format or using the right, you know, app or something like, you know what I mean? Like my yeah. script didn't look like every Hollywood script or whatever else. Cause I didn't have any writing schooling or training, but it was a scene and it made sense. And so until, you know, and I'm still learning how to do all that stuff, but it, but, in, but until then it still had to get done. Like it had to get done. So you know, when we when we shot <clears throat> season one of Film All Kansas City, um, it was done with the great camera that we had. You know what I mean? So nothing should stop you and, and nothing should get in the way of, you know, creating and producing results. Uh, hopefully I answered your question in that regard. But hell, I mean, it's either going to get done, as I said, or you're going to be looking in the mirror like, who's going to do this for me? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but not so much. Like, I know it's going to get done, but there's things that, you know, as you take on, well, Pete and I talked to my buddy, Todd Nunes, same kind of thing. He's an indie filmmaker. And because he can do it all, he has to force himself to not do it all and get people to do whatever craft services. Like that's the last thing you need the director doing is handing out donuts and red vines and shit. Right. So how do you marshal out and force yourself to not be the every man and and now lead other people to go be passionate and get them to where they're contributing to the project in a way that allows you to take that hat off and, and let someone else be that creative force. Well, thank you for steering me. So that's a great question because, and we've got to uh, put ourselves in check and be willing to be team builders you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and leaders and shepherds in, in that aspect. And I would love, as I said, to keep building my team. And I am still building my team. So if there's anyone out there that's got interest, uh, but specifically is skilled at what we're doing here, whether it's music or film, production side, stuff like that, reach out to me, you know, uh, and reach out to Pete. I mean, it's it's just got to be one of those things, Pete, where you, as I said, put yourself in check and be like, all right, like, for instance, right now, like my music endeavors, I had to be 
I had to take a back seat and be like, yo, I, I can't do this all myself. That's obvious. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So now I've got to just chill out and say, somebody else do this. Or, mm-hmm. or you want to do this? What do you, you know, when I meet people about, you know, joining the outlaw team and, and uh, things like that, it's like, what are you passionate about? And I'd ask the same questions in regards to Kill Em All in the series, Kill Em All Kansas City and Kill Em All Los Angeles. But what are you passionate about, Pete? Like, what makes you hungry inside? You know, what's that fire for, you know? And because that's what I want you to do best at, you know what I mean? Can you do this? Yeah, it's great. Like, but what are you best at? All right, well, let's focus on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that position always exists, too. Like, I don't want to go out there and sell my own at the time, online series or web series, Kill Em All in Kansas City. But I went out there. We did uh, the film festival circuit. We did really well with Kill Em All in Kansas City uh, as a proof of concept, if you will, and as a web series. I mean, first season had 30, 35 minutes of, of uh, licensable content. And in that regard, at a film festival, I ran out. I played the executive producer business, you know what I mean? And, and, and I took a a teammate with me and you know uh three hours later uh had a just not a distribution but a licensing deal on the table for uh for licensing internationally for the first season of kill them all for the very first project i'd ever written and produced and starred in and you know what i mean like it's not gonna happen if you don't make it happen so (laughs) but but it does take a team it does take many people and just to bounce back to the music side Trust me, I would love nothing more than just to be the artist. Somebody called me, the car's out front. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like that, I mean, you know, music's in the, you know, music's in the email box or, or whatever's happening. And it's just like now, you know, I'm, I've got a, a new single coming out on, on May 15th titled She Good. Uh, it'll be my fourth single under uh, the indie label TME True Muscle Entertainment and promoting that even, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm still on the fine, or I'm still on the phone rather with um, getting bids from from uh, public public relations uh, professionals and things like that for, for doing a, a short notice single campaign, and, you know what I mean? And of course, of course, me reaching out to people online never stops and, and that in itself is exhausting. So, you know, still building that team and, and trading assets with people, uh, that, you know, that that's very important as well. Excuse me. Uh, that's important as well. It's like um, someone, someone told me one time, I said, you know, we are all scaffolding for each other. I said, that's deep. Yep. <laughs> because it's not that we're stepping on each other to get higher, but we all need each other to get higher. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the only way it's going to happen. And so then it becomes about building and nurturing and maintaining important personal and business relationships. And then, excuse me, but your story just there uh, reminded me of, of well, a few things come to mind is but you, you're, you've got a particular personality trait that I really admire so much. This, this one that I'm in particular, I'm pointing to is you're very good at not getting, I think in my way, I see very good at getting out of your own way. A lot of us struggle with being our own worst. And I know I fight with that. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> like, I mean, I just love you. Just, it was just a passing remark. You said a few minutes ago, you said, I, I, I've owned countless guitars. I don't know how to play any of them. But it doesn't stop you from, in your mind, you're going to add that to, you, you, you're a rock and roll guy and you want to stand there with a guitar sometime. And I know you can play, but maybe not. You're talking about to the level. No, like not at all. I can't not play at all. At all. Like, no. I've, got, I've got a 12 string guitar back here somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so the point is, you don't, you're, not, you're not getting caught up in the details of you never had a guitar lesson. And, Right. But, you know, and then and I see you, you go and you go back and forth, back and forth. And I, I don't know that there's a, a rhythm by design or it just happens organic. You go back and forth between uh, your your writing and your acting and then your R&B music. 
and people have to listen to your music and you can and and you can get to it free on uh, on social media. We'll make sure that everybody, yeah, because I know you drop your music and the full length uh, music videos are absolutely beautiful. And that's and, and by the way, I, like, folks should know it, when you see a really beautiful music video, the effort that goes into that is mind boggling. I mean, per capita, per unit, per second of what's up on the screen, music videos are incredibly densely difficult to do. Massive amount of effort that goes in particularly in my the way i see it in, in the editing process so people can check out your music but then you you know so you're you being a filmmaker that supports you being an r&b uh, vocalist and i would say the r and i'm not sure how much you benefit the other way around you know could, or maybe maybe you could opine on that i i see how beautiful your music videos are and I know this, you know where to put a camera, you know where, how to connect to a camera, and your, which is really your audience. That comes from your heart, and you can't do that unless it's really there. And I, so, but you know how to do things technically. And I'm, I'm not sure what the benefit you get as a filmmaker from your R&B. Maybe you could expand on that a little bit, because I find it truly, you know, really interesting to see, you know, somebody that can go, because they're, they're really quite different domains uh, they're both in the arts but make no mistake about it very few actors are really singing they're, they're your j-lo's it's a handful of people like this in the world but not many Stand on that have that relationship and maybe how that benefits uh, each other or not i'm not sure thank you for saying that we met strictly through film and television i did not know yeah i didn't even know you could sing <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. love yeah. Yeah. You know via, via social media An actor, and, you know, we met, the first thing I'll give a disclaimer is in the entertainment business, you know, I tend to be a, a bit of a, well, let's say um, a shapeshifter. So, you know, when me and, when Pete and I met, I was Jesse Pringle, executive producer, writer of Kill em All. You know, before Pete and I met, before Kill em All, before Los Angeles, I was a different stage name or brand name uh, or alias uh, as an R&B singer since 1996, you know? So it started in music and then went to film only to return back to music. Uh, so whether it's, you know, whether you say it's a, a means to the end part of the creative process to, to, to continue building up, you know, each of your layers, if you will, as a creative or as an artist, you know, it all relates. And and thanks for noticing, you know, the music videos. You're right about I was I was so excited to get into the music video side of the music from the experience, real life experience that I had accomplished with the Kill 'em All series. And that was two cities, multiple seasons, like, you know, hundreds of people and <clears throat> just learning from everybody. You know what I mean? And, and so then it became, all right, well, I know what I want to, I, I know what I like up here as a filmmaker. I know what lighting, you know, I want it to look like. I want to set an atmosphere like this. I want this in the frame because I want to see this, you know, landmark or, or whatever. And so uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm excited to, to shoot music videos um, after knowledge in the film and television world. And, and as I said, it's all, it all just ends up being a means to the end, if you will. Um, <clears throat> and I still, like I said uh, before, and we were discussing before, still have to get out of my way. Uh, you know, my, my first music video that I released under the new label um, was titled, I Want You, uh, R&B track, Shot in California, you know, shot in a, in, in a house in, in the valley, in the hills, uh, you know, big house, beautiful house, beautiful girl, had, had a, you know, American muscle. I got a thing, I got a, I got a thing for American muscle. So I got a thing for classic hot rods, you know what I mean? And, and that's, uh, you know, something that I like to, to just kind of keep going. Um, you know, I, I know the frames I wanted 
I wanted to go to Malibu. I wanted to, you know, drive the canyon, bang the canyon, you know what I mean? All that stuff. And, <clears throat> but I had to get out of my own way. So I was like, you know, I went to my bro and, and partner, Big Four, uh, the CEO at, um, at uh, TME, Trimus Entertainment, and, and he's produced uh, some, some films in the past as well. And he was like, I, I, I said, Court, man, direct this thing, will you? Because I just want to be the artist. <laughs> so, but, you know, I had a treatment already in my head. I was like, all right, well, I sent him all my, you know, I sent him a Google Doc of all my ideas for the treatment. You know, we picked up a, a, a great camera uh, operator, videographer and editor, uh, Sean Riddle at the time. We all just kind of teamed up, you know. I found uh, uh, Victoria Elise, uh, uh, what an outstanding model she was. But that, you know, that casting process, it was a casting process. It was just like the film, you know what I mean? Like, so uh, <clears throat> it was awesome to have that experience as a filmmaker to then cross that over to my music video, you know what I mean? Now, eventually, do I, you know, do I give up all the reins and, you know, allow another production company to, to, to take over the whole process of shooting a music video? Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But until then, I've got to treat it like I'm the Quentin Tarantino of music videos <laughs> and try and put something together. You know? And what's next? What's coming up? What's coming up? Uh, well, as I said, uh, I've, got, I've got a new... You dropped it on. You got a music video in uh, ready to go, right? That's in the hopper. Mm, I... So that's going to drop. I want you to talk about that for a second. And I also know you've got your next film project in the queue, right? I do, about that. I do. I do. Um, we are at this time. We are not shooting, uh, or rather, releasing a mu a music video for new single "She Good" on May fifteenth. Uh, so for it in that regard, video lines. Not that we won't make something in the future for it, but uh, we've got our singles. <clears throat> lined up back to back for release so we've got to keep the production moving and so you know independently and budget wise you allocate money here you know what I mean or spread it along the line so you know what I mean it is uh, we've got a lot of things coming up and uh, uh, we'll, we'll certainly um, attempt to to release uh, music videos for every single that we put out. Uh, but if it's more efficient and worthy to release singles without the video uh, to continue promoting the music and, and connecting with, with listeners uh, and to the audience, then that's the most important thing. Uh, I've got to get my music out there because that's how relatively I, I communicate. You know, uh, uh, by birth, you know, I'm an introvert, very much so. But <clears throat> once again, you know, when you're put in a position, whether it be you're homeless, sleeping on a subway in New York, you know what I mean, or um, <clears throat> scratching for 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 gas and light bill money and water bill money, you know. When you're home alone or wherever it is, you gotta make you gotta make shit happen, man. Like so, um, <clears throat> videos will get continue to get made. Uh, music will continue to to get released. Um, but back to the thing where I had to learn how to be outgoing. I had to learn how to how to pitch and how to rebuttal and how to you know what I mean. How to close. Uh, through whether it be through you know the retail business or telemarketing business or, I mean when you're in the entertainment world whether if you're an actor or a screenwriter or a producer or a director or a singer or whatever rapper or whatever uh, man you gotta you gotta do whatever it takes to pay the bills until as I said a means to the end until everything else uh, pans out so you know I, I could build a house <laughs> I can't, you know I mean? like, there's a thousand things I've learned how to do over the years just to be able to um, uh, remain creative uh, to, to continue doing what I think 
And what I believe is, is an anointing from God. So I said it. That's how I am. So, you know, I'll never stop doing that. So, you know, if I've got to uh, <clears throat> become or grow to be something more than just the original artist, uh, an introvert, then it's got to get done. I was uh, recently, uh, well, I was doing research for you when we were talking uh, about having you on the show. And I saw that you were working on a project that you were going to have Don Fry come in and beat you up for a little bit. And, and we, we had Don Fry on the show the other day. So I'm curious how that all went down with you and Don and how that project went. That episode is the same episode of Film All Los Angeles that the amazing Pete Koch is part of, a.k.a. Big Ben. AKA yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, Don, that was my Big Ben, the, the Aryan hitman. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Don Fry was great. That was inspired. And, and again, that was that was due to you and your relationships. And you were able to, to get Don to, to come on in. And uh, he was great. Yeah, that was that was that was that was good fun. Don Don is is such a great um, personality. You know what I mean? In in real life, uh, on screen, in the cage fighting years ago, uh, in the ring, he was a wrestler in Japan. You know, I mean, all kinds of crazy. Just you know, here's the thing. You know, and, and Pete's included. Whether it's me or Don Fry, or Pete, or even you, Pete. <clears throat> uh, we all got to be a bit reckless, you know, in spirit to be even attempting to do the things that we do. You know what I mean? And and that's just, you know, call it, you know, uh, an addiction to adrenaline <laughs> or, as I say, competition even. You know, you got to get like it's uh, Don Fry is no nothing short of that, man. And if, if there's a description of a. Uh, a modern day cowboy, he's it for sure. I mean, he is so stoked in personality that, you know, well, he has had an action figure. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, we were talking about a, an original UFC Hall of Famer, uh, Knight of Champions winner, uh, UFC heavyweight champion. I mean, this dude is just straight gnarly. And I met him through a friend of a friend. And, um, a friend of a friend? No, I met him directly to a friend. So it was just one degree of separation. <laughs> and, uh, but those are relationships um, that, that, as Pete said, I created in Los Angeles just by getting out there, being a Midwest dude who worked hard and it was honest about the passion that he had. And I was like, yo, I mean, this is what's going on. This is what I'm doing. I'd love to have everybody involved with it. Uh, we've got some great people already attached to it got you know a great crew great locations already set up and i was writing and producing and casting uh kill them all la from 1700 miles away in kansas city you know i had my first red carpet in, in, in studio city at a, at a at a kansas city chiefs friendly bar and you know had a casting red carpet party which i got in trouble for by you know from sag so <laughs> But, but, you know, <clears throat> before that plug got pulled, I, you know, I was able to Taff Hartley, I think 30, 30 to 40, you know, non-union, um, passionate actors and actresses that didn't have any other option or opportunity to join the Screen Actors Guild. And, you know, I remember getting my SAG card. It was, I was Taff Hartley. You know, on a, on a production called uh, Water and Power, written by Richard Montoya, award winning screenwriter. And I mean, um, <clears throat> I still try and stay in contact with him. You know, just the, the many different personalities that you meet and, and what would end up, you know, being um, professional alliances or, or, or friends or, or whatever. I mean, you know, <clears throat> burning bridges ain't the thing to do. <laughs> You know what I mean? But, 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 but on the same hand, but on the same hand, you've got to understand that not everybody's built for this. And you're going to get people that come in and want to be, oh, I'm, I'm all about it, and then just fall off. So, you know, I mean, that's where to me, so that's where to me, 
where the whole athletic thing comes in, the competition thing comes in. You know, are you built for this? You know, mentally and physically, are you built for this? Because for me, I'm going to train and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go hard. Are you going to go hard? <laughs> like So, you know, it ends up being like that. And, you know, the week always wither, bro. Like nothing's going to stop this, you know, flower from blossoming. You know, if you want to put it in that 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 to that way. But it is what it is, man. I'm going to keep scratching and fighting until uh, till everything that I get and these rewards are, are, are reaped. Um, you know, and it's all for, to be honest with you, man, I'm just trying to provide for my family. I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to do what, what I feel, uh, I'm best for and God put me here for and provide for my family, bro. That's it. My family knows that I would be homeless on a subway in New York city and still love doing what I do and try and do it. Cause I got 200 CDs in my backpack. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I'll, I'll go to, you know, I'll go get some peanuts or something like to, whatever it takes. But for, you know, for friends, and family, for their sacrifice, bro, I'm trying to provide for everybody so we can do this. So, you know what I mean? And that, and that, that obviously uh, goes for Pete too, man. I, it, what a blessing it is to, to meet, you know, Pete Koch. I can't say enough about you, bro. Like, thank you, man. What a what, a, what an athlete! I mean, we're talking about first round draft pick. I don't know what your censorship deal is, so I won't start dropping f bombs. But are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, you know, I grew up in that. I was born in the seventies and grew up in the eighties, so you know, I remember watching Pete on TV. And to, to have the opportunity to, to work <clears throat> alongside and, and even uh, in, a, in a lot of ways uh, be befriended by, by Pete. Um, you know, well, you know here's a, uh, Jesse, just, we were just talking uh, a, couple, a couple days ago. We don't talk on the phone a lot. It's mostly like, like a lot of folks. It's just like staying in touch on social media. But when we do get on the phone, um, it's, it's, I always find discussing things with Jesse interesting. And here's a, like, I, I found it like a coachable moment. Here's a, a, a pattern. Again, I, I, I can identify it because I only will get on the phone with Jesse every three, five months. And that is, he'll say uh, casually, and I like the way that he presents it, but he'll say, let's do something together. Think to yourself what you might want to do with me and how I can help you. And I'll do the same. And let's work together. And, he, and I think you do that um, a lot. And, and, I, and, it, and it reminds me of how, um, how simple, free it is to mention to people that are in your circle of influence and, and vice versa that, hey, you know what? We're, we're in this thing together. We're both artists. We're, we're both looking to... Uh, to hire our station in life and within our careers and just say it, just say it. Don't forget to say it. Let's put it out there. Hey, let's, what are you working on? What are you thinking about? Where's your head at? Let's do something together. Doesn't have to be today. There's no pressure, but just think about that. Just putting that out there is, is to me, it's like, I, I'm repeating it only because I think it's, 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 it's that important that, and I, I think we could all use that, that reminder from time to time. Man. You know, I, I thank you for mentioning that, Pete. Um, uh, it does come down to that. And, and you know, I, I've met so many people over the years um, that I feel like I don't follow up enough. So, you know what I mean? And in, in reality, so um, when I do have the opportunity to follow up, especially respectfully, uh, with you, Pete, um, I'm going to be spinning the wheels up here trying to, like, yo, what are we going to get going? Like, you know, <laughs> I've got to make this relationship a benefit for you and me as well because I'm working with you. You dig what I'm saying? Like, right. 
Um, I was just talking to, to your old teammate, Bill Moss, big Bill Moss. Like, you know, I'm like, hey, Bill, man, let's do something again. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, but but that goes for everyone, man. Like, so, and, and Don Fry was the same way. I'm like, yo, like, Don, you want to you wanna punch me out? Like, on camera? Like, it, it, like, it just happened like that. It's through, through a mutual friend, and, and Pete knows Jimmy C., you know, and it, Jimmy, Jimmy will probably hate me talking about him or even mentioning him, but man, I mean, come on. Jimmy's, Jimmy's the reason for a lot of my uh, accomplishments in, in regards to um, LA and then post LA and, you know what I mean? Relationships, man. And uh, James on is, is a, is a relationship. Uh, master of ceremonies if you will i mean he's a pro he's been doing it his whole life he was born in hollywood you know on famous uh, uh outlaw you know uh, uh hollywood actor if you will uh Wayne smith but i mean jimmy z you know pete how much can i say about that well that's how don fry and i met through jimmy z so you know that happened and, and when me and don got together uh, there was a period in my life when I was fighting com- competitively uh, for money to pay my bills, <clears throat> to, to put, you know, to make sure that uh, the heat was on and, and to pay for my studio time. Uh, and, and I fought merely because there was nothing competitive athletically going. There was no uh, release. You dig what I'm saying? Like there was no release athletically, competitively. You know, so I was like, they said they'd pay me 500 bucks or 300 bucks. But I think my person was 300 bucks to, to fight this dude. Like, in the ring, like, it is what it is, man. Like, and so <clears throat> I knew I could fight. I wasn't like trained up or anything like that, but going there and brawl for 500 bucks, like, all right, I'll do that. Uh, you know, uh, fortunately for me, I'm a better singer than I am a fighter. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was all part of a means to an end. <clears throat> but while I was doing it, I did train as hard as I could. I did do as much research as I could. I did do, you know, know who Don Fry was. was Don the Predator Fry, man. So when I met him in, in, in real life, you know, first thing he, first thing we did was we went out back and and uh, uh, we grappled. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. want to go outside and grapple? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. But and then uh, you know when we were on set, it's the same thing, man. He, he, you know, as a tough guy, he's got so much comedic timing as an actor. Boy, yeah. You know, and he's just, you know, he's built for this. You know, he's like uh, really funny. You know, he he, he is like a bit. Of, and wrestling had to do something, you know what I mean? The personalities of, of uh, professional wrestling to uh, make you able to do that. But man, what a great personality Don Fry was. And, and fighting him on screen, it, it was it was wild and fun. And it looks awesome. When I went and see him down in Arizona, it was great. I had him do a couple of videos for a couple of guys that I did sessions with that day. And these are all badass guys. One's a Jay Dobbins, an undercover ATF agent. And the other one is... Uh, Sawman Sawyer, who's a SEAL Team 6 badass who goes and hunts child predators now. And uh, so he did videos for these guys. And you're right. He's hilarious. He plays the bad guy great. He's like, you know, he tells Sawman, it's not good enough. Whatever he's doing, you're not good enough. I'll come out there and kick your squid ass. Maybe. (laughs) There's that maybe in there because, you know, he's SEAL Team 6. It's hilarious. I just I want to make sure people know to go and find you on your Instagram account. That's the best place. Or if you just look up jesse uh, on youtube and i've got the links in the show notes so you guys can find him there but in, in terms of I, I don't have any more questions for you i'll leave i'll leave it to close out to pete but this is how you support independent artists is going to their instagram going to the youtube subscribing paying attention to what they do and if you dig it just support it by being present by commenting and just encouraging what jesse does because he's a get it done kind of guy but sometimes it's nice to have someone say hey man keep doing it i love it keep going so that's how we all support a guy like jesse's goes to instagram account follow it participate give him some comments and then i'll leave i'll leave it to pete to close out 
Yeah, no, I, I echo your your sentiments and those of us that are, uh, you know, artists. We we have an opportunity to entertain people, make people feel better. I don't know when this episode's going to come out, but undoubtedly we're still going to be involved in uh, most of us kind of locked up during during this this COVID uh, pandemic. People are watching their computers and TVs more than ever. And they're looking for good content. And, and you know, what even drives that is they want to feel better. They want to be entertained. There's a lot, the, the, the unattended consequences of everybody being locked in their houses uh, during this pandemic are depression. There's no doubt. It's going to, it's going to be, it's, there's going to be a lot of, of sort of uh, wreckage to deal with, uh, make no mistake. And, but, but I do think that one of the solutions is, and one of the ways people can sort of soothe their emotions during this difficult time is, is to be entertained and they can find it. There, there's so then in, in fact, the, the choices are, can be confounding, but I'm saying, Hey, check out Jesse Pringle. Like, see what the outlaw is up to. It's free. If you got, everybody's got YouTube. If you're watching this show or listening to this show, you got Wi-Fi. So go ahead and, and, and find Jesse. That might, might be most, uh, it might be simplest maybe to find you on Facebook or Instagram. I know that's that's how he and I generally communicate with each other. But beyond that, YouTube, you've got a, a very well organized YouTube channel. It's, it's beautiful. You can watch one of his TV shows. Go check out his, his r and uh, videos. I encourage people to do that. Um, support him as an artist and uh, make yourself feel better. It's good stuff. Pete and Pete, man, what an honor and a pleasure. Uh, all respect for having me on today. I love talking about the process and I love uh, talking about uh, how important um, uh, hey, alliances are. And so I was happy, to, uh, very happy to make this alliance with you guys today and, and uh, look forward to, to uh, working with you guys in the future. I mean, talking about what we love doing, I'm always down for it. So, you know what I mean? We do this anytime. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Jesse.